OK, back to the news I mentioned at the top of the show when a federal court judge has found that nine newspapers proved substantial truth regarding claims Ben Robert Smith committed war crimes, including murder, while serving with the SAS in Afghanistan. Justice Anthony Basanko dismissed the Victoria Cross recipient's defamation case in what is being described as the trial of the century. Joining me now is Australia and the Australian's legal affairs contributor, Chris Merritt. Chris, first of all, your reaction to the decision? We haven't really heard from you yet. Well, uh, I'd like to be able to give you a, an informed reaction, but the, the two judgments in this case, the reasons in this case, uh, have not been released. Uh, mm. There's a closed court uh, set of reasons, which we'll never see, and the open court uh, set of reasons, which have been suppressed until the government finishes going through it to ensure there's no uh, security uh, problems that need to be vetted. So all we've got is the bald decision. Uh, the bald decision, it's tragic for Australia to see uh, this outcome. Um, what it proves yet again is if you're going to sue for defamation, you better line up all your ducks. Uh, this reminds me of the, the Oscar Wilde uh, case in the 19th century where Oscar Wilde sued for defamation, lost and was subsequently arrested and ruined. Uh, uh, we don't know whether Ben Robert Smith is going to be uh, charged in a criminal court yet, but uh, right now uh, his benefactor, uh, Kerry Stokes, is in the gun for <clears throat> a very large amount of money and it might just be an, an indemnity cost order as well, mm. not just reasonable costs. So that's everything, every penny. But that's been flagged. We don't know whether the court will order that, but that's yeah. on, the, on the cards as well. It's really interesting and, and not specifically on this case, and I've been through this process myself as well. When I see that someone has taken defamation action because I know the cost involved, the, the, the impact that it has on your mental health, your emotional health, your families, etc., I always assume that they are so completely confident in their prospects because otherwise you just wouldn't do it. Mm. I think that's right. Um, th this case, the only thing you can say for certain about this case at this point is that it's a v huge victory for the media, huge yeah. victory for the media that had to defend itself. Now, I want to make this very clear. Ben Robert Smith was not on trial. The media was on trial mm. and the media won. Um, to describe Ben Robert Smith at this point as a murderer, as some parts of the media have, I think is a little premature. Um, he wasn't uh, facing criminal charges. Uh, this was a, a civil case. He didn't have to prove anything. The media had to defend itself. Um, he asserted that the media had published material implying or imputing that he was a murderer um, and the media successfully defended the truth of that, the substantial truth of that. So it's a victory for the media yeah. to that extent. Uh, how far that goes, what the judge actually says in his reasons, we'll have to wait until Monday, I think. I'm glad you brought that up because seconds after the judge handed down his verdict, there were headlines that referred to Ben Robert Smith as a murderer. And, and in my head, I'm thinking, unless this has gone through a criminal court, which is beyond reasonable doubt, as opposed to civil, which is a lesser um, kind of probabilities, I thought, I don't know if you can do that yet, but, but mm -hmm. newspapers have. Look, you're exactly right. Uh, it's very important to keep that in mind. The civil standard um, is on the balance of probability. It's a much lower hurdle to jump over, and that's, uh, that's what happened in this case. The criminal standard is very difficult, beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, that's the uh, burden that a prosecutor would have to meet. The, the really extraordinary thing now is uh, we don't yet know whether there's going to be uh, a charge laid against um, mm. Mr Robert Smith. But bear this in mind, uh, because of the two different uh, standards of proof, burdens of proof, there is a possibility that a future prosecution might not succeed. Yep. Just consider that. So we'd have a, a man uh, uh, whose reputation is in tatters right now. What would happen? It's worth speculating about this. What would happen if he's acquitted in a criminal trial. Yep. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, very quickly, uh, interesting that uh, Seven has accepted his resignation. Uh, the appeal, I know, costs a lot of money uh, for both parties. If maybe Seven's support is, is fledgling a little bit, 
Mm. He's not going to have the funds for that if Kerry Stokes isn't going to front up. Do you think there'll be an appeal or not? Well, um, his, his counsel has um, uh, successfully argued for an extended period to consider the appeal. I think this is for two reasons. Uh, the judge did indicate that it, his reasons were extensive or yeah. long. So that tells me they are extremely long, if a judge says they're long. <laughs> um, and we won't yeah. see them until, um, until Monday. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want to uh, put money on this at the moment, but yeah. if we're looking at uh, up to $40 million in costs Ugh. and $40 million on in, an indemnity basis, not, not a, a, a tax basis or a reasonable cost basis, it's a massive amount of money that uh, Kerry Stokes is going to be up yeah. for. Will he want to put more money into the pot? Who knows? Yeah, we'll wait and watch with interest. Chris Merritt, thank you so much for your brilliance and your expertise as always.